Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, my name is Rajan Pillay from Garuda Capital. Um, firstly, I must thank Dr. Sampat and Mr. Logan Aidu for kindly inviting me to be a speaker this afternoon. We would have liked uh, to have had a bigger participation at this conference, and indeed we did try, but uh, we never got to it. Uh, but uh, we would certainly like to pledge our support for the fifth conference, uh, and we'll do that in a, probably a, a bit of better manner. But thank you, Dr. Sampath and Logi, for the invitation to at least talk in my personal capacity here. So um, Andre has given us uh, a bit of a view on, um, on the banking sector. I thought it would be more appropriate if I uh, say a few things in terms of a wide, wider overview in terms of what uh, South Africa is about and financing in South Africa. And perhaps if there's time to take questions at the end, or we can certainly chat uh, offline about what I'm saying. But to start off, uh, I think it'll be important just to give you a bit of background as to where I'm coming from and the definition of how we work. In terms of Garuda Capital, we're uh, financial intermediaries. We're non-banking financial intermediaries and we information intermediaries. Uh, and those two concepts are very important in raising finance. Because if you listen to what Andre was saying uh, from a pure banking point of view, and I've been in banking for many years, uh, it's clear he's not gonna give you any money. Uh, <laughs> so you need to come to us. You need to pay us to go to Andre and Andre will give you the money. And we do this practically on a daily basis in South Africa, and that's the definition of our business. We non-banking financial intermediaries. The reason for this is that, which I needed to point out to the conference today, is that the uh, financial markets in South Africa are very conservative, very difficult, and very tough. So lending is uh, really utilizing, and Logi will tell you, uh, very, very first world type principles in a, in a third world developing country. And there's a mixed mismatch between policy, strategy, and implementation, which is entirely why the government in this country is having such difficulty, because you have banks, you have pension funds sitting on piles of money, which are not being released, therefore development is not happening, there's no infrastructure spending, there's no capital spending, and it's, it's a big problem. This, what I call uh, banking conservatism. But as I said, let me just chat on a top, uh, touch on a few topics. And if there's interest, I'm happy to take questions now or later. So uh, at Garuda Capital, we financial intermediaries, we information intermediaries. We also uh, are involved in country entry strategy. Uh, for example, uh, if you have an Indian multinational or an American company wanting to come into South Africa, we structure the entry strategy for them, we open the tra transactions up for them, we lobby for them to government, etc. We can give you a number of examples, um, Bosana, uh, Escorts from India, uh, Shrenuj, a big diamond group, they were looking for uh, uh, diamonds and uh, we secured approximately $20 million per month over three years. So these are the kind of things which we do, we're not, we're not in the space where Andre works, we, non-banking. Uh, to give you an example of some of the transactions we, we are involved in last year, we involved in one of the largest uh, mergers and acquisition transactions in South Africa. It was seven, over seven billion rand, about $700 million for the acquisition of Prime Media Limited. Uh, and that was on behalf of the BE Consortium. The year before, uh, Garuda Capital was uh, involved with the awarding of the lottery license the third lottery license. Uh, that was a 60 billion rand, about $6 billion uh, tender, which was, uh, went through the public system and got messed up. Uh, one Sunday afternoon, I was in my garden, and the minister said, uh, called me and said, can you please come to Joburg? Uh, that being, being a Monday, and I said, no, I can't do it, uh, because I only go to Joburg on a Tuesday. Uh, and then I said to, the minister, can you please tell me what it's about? Uh, uh, and he said, you can't talk to me on the phone. So I said, well, I can't come. He said, it's really important, please come. In the end, what had happened was that this lottery process had been running for a year and a half. It had been shortlisted. 
It went to the board of directors, the, gam the gambling board. This is all confidential information, but I'll share it with you so that you understand the environment that we work in. Uh, 60 billion rand tender, $6 billion. Uh, half the board voted for the existing uh, license holder. The other three directors voted for the newcomer. The chairman of the, uh, uh, of the gambling board was clever enough not to use his casting vote because had he done so, he may not have uh, survived the week after. Uh, and when I say that, it's, it, these kind of things do happen. So uh, we get involved in some of those things. Uh, currently we're involved with about 10 harbors, for example, from public works. That's just a quick overview view in terms of what we do at Garuda Capital. What I think might be of more interest to the delegates this afternoon is to give a brief uh, overview of the South African economy so that there's a bit of understanding from international people coming into South Africa to see where we stand. Uh, we can start off with the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, uh, of which I am a member, and I was the first black member of the uh, Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Uh, the, the JSC has uh, a market capitalization of over one trillion dollars, not billion, trillion. Uh, so it's a very important market in, in Africa on the entire continent. The other thing which people need to understand is South Africa uh, is probably accounting for GDP of uh, at least $400 billion per annum. Uh, it's at a par with Nigeria. So South Africa, in terms of its economic activity, uh, we have 60 million people plus minus. Uh, in terms of its activity, we've got the largest ports. The top five banks on the continent of Africa are all South African. Um, the uh, electricity generation for the entire continent, at least two-thirds of that comes from South Africa. Um, the other thing which people need to be aware of in terms of a macroeconomic view uh, is that South Africa is still characterized by what we call white monopoly. That means the colonialists, the, uh, the people who were the previous regime, still control the mainstream economy. Now, for Tamilians, uh, for blacks in South Africa, uh, the government is still struggling to integrate us into that economy after many, many decades, and it's been very difficult. For international delegates like yourselves who want to invest in South Africa, and I'll, I'll touch upon the three topics which was mainstream today, education, health, and ICT is where we see opportunities. But the other thing which is characteristic of South Africa, which is very important for international business, is the relatively high prices that are in South Africa. Now, if you're looking at Indian companies wanting to export, the first thing you consider is what is your price realization, what is your price point? Uh, and this makes uh, uh, direct exports, but probably manufacturing in South Africa, very, very attractive. The big Indian automotive component manufacturers, for example, are Indian, and they're number two in South Africa currently. Um, the other thing which uh, is of um, probably importance to investors coming in is that the economy currently now, for the last five years and going into the future, is gonna be characterized by high government spending. Previously, the private sector was very involved in the South African economy, and uh, for the last uh, 10 years, the private sector investment and in, in, uh, involvement in the economy has been declining, leading to higher unemployment. And the ANC government, as a matter of policy, because the private sector was not making the investments required, has taken an active role to get more involved in the economy now, that has big implications. Normally, uh, we, we heard yesterday about the falling of the Berlin Wall and the dis, dis, uh, command economies, centralized economies being diversified. You would expect South Africa to be going that way, but it's not that way. It's, it's going the other way. It's going back to for more government intervention, more government spending. What it means for business people is that you're going to have to do more and more uh, business with government rather than with private corporations and private individuals, and this has big impacts. And the reason why I'm saying that is that a lot of our clients, uh, large companies out of India, uh, 
they come to South Africa to do business with large, what we call state-owned entities, SOEs. These are essentially nationalized industries, and that's where the big spend is. Uh, a few years ago, 2010, we had the World Cup, uh, and that was massive, massive spending by government on infrastructure. Uh, talking about the topics today, just quickly, we had three topics, education, health, and ICT. Now, I was in London recently uh, on behalf of a South African client in education. Uh, what this gentleman did, he's got five or six colleges in South Africa, uh, and he was looking at uh, raising money, and that's our job as Garuda Capital is to, is funds mobilization, raising capital. So we went to London, and we tried to raise money for this particular group. And we found that uh, there's a lot of appetite for fund mobilization, for raising capital out of London. And the reason why I'm mentioning is because we had, for example, uh, Maha Learning this, uh, this morning. Uh, we feel that uh, there's a lot of money available for education globally from funders, from fund managers. Uh, it's a, what they call an exciting sector. It's got good prospects, it's a defensive sector. So uh, for India, if there's interest, we can, we can lobby and we can release some kind of funding for that because obviously the markets are big, uh, the systems are good, the, uh, the syllabuses are excellent, and it's a, it's, it provides a good funding model. Uh, also from the International Finance Corporation, the IFC, lots of things can be done. There was a panel also on, earlier on health. Uh, we've had big Indian groups like Apollo, uh, Fortis come to South Africa. They are interested in uh, making acquisitions and getting a footprint here. These are the kind of things that we can help with. Uh, in fact, the one group uh, who Apollo were talking to, and Manipal also was, was very heavily involved with one of, one of the hospital groups. Uh, so we have involvement over there. Uh, because, as I said earlier, the characteristic of a South African economy is that price, prices are high. So if you can uh, do medical tourism, which was a topic this morning, for example, uh, and if you're going to charge, uh, let's say, 50,000 rupees for uh, a patient for a particular procedure, in South Africa you're going to get 250,000 rupees. So if you look at it realistically, it might be better for people to set up to medical tourism here and get higher prices, but that's a separate topic. Uh, we also, Mr. Joseph and Mr. Venkatesh Kumar uh, also chatted this morning about procedures and about health, etc. cetera. Uh, at Garuda Capital, we're busy at the moment with three, three hospitals, um, uh, one in Johannesburg, one in Ghana, and one in Lusaka in Zambia. Uh, these are all attractive uh, opportunities for uh, medical and medical type uh, companies, equipment, etc., to be set up. The third area I just wanted to touch on was ICT. Now, the reason why we, uh, I'd like to pick on ICT is because uh, we learn basically on a case-by-case -case basis. We're currently dealing with an Indian company um, who are systems integrators. They supply um, finance, uh, 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 technology solutions to South African banks, the banking sector. And we are helping them with a 150 million rand uh, capital raise, what we call Black Economic Empowerment, BEE. Uh, this is another thing which international investors need to be aware of. If they want to come and deal in transactions in South Africa, uh, they need to comply with legislation, which does call for uh, involvement of the local population. And that's in terms of BEE. So uh, the continent of Africa imports every year $20 billion of software out of India, primarily Bangalore, Mumbai, uh, and Chennai. Uh, now, that pre presents very exciting opportunities uh, for the on-ground on presence in the country. If you ask me uh, then to uh, talk about other opportunities in South Africa, it's obviously got to be involved mining. There's very big resources around in South Africa, and some of the Indian companies are, are getting more involved. Uh, we're also doing a bit of work currently with Zimbabwe. Um, Andre was talking about um, uh, lending and uh, lending to clients against a bank guarantee. Uh, he was talking about uh, state-owned companies and a treasury guarantee. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, uh, those things are not really very easily obtainable, 
Um, we tried to do a bit of work with Bank of China uh, for SAA. Uh, National Treasury won't give guarantees too easily. On the other hand, we're doing a lot of work uh, in Zimbabwe where a sovereign guarantee is available, no takers. <laughs> Just yet. So uh, banking, uh, banking and money lending is a very difficult and um, complex topic. Um, Andre also spoke about uh, things, for example, um, the quality of the principles, the quality of the promoter. Uh, for uh, pick and pay, we raised 1.5 billion rand this year on behalf of uh, a very reasonable chap from Johannesburg at Tamilian. Um, Garuda Capital raised the money for them uh, in principle from a bank uh, within three weeks. Unfortunately, the jockey didn't have the capacity to perform, to deliver, or had any track record prior. So uh, it is a difficult space. Uh, mining opportunities are very good. Zimbabwe, we, 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 I, I mentioned, there's a lot of real decent opportunities on the ground uh, if you want to take the risk. And uh, coming to the risk, risk is not something that you run away from. Risk is something that you price in. So good Indian businessmen, pricing the risk. If you go to Zimbabwe, the country is run by China, basically, uh, and they've priced in the risk. So there's uh, many angles we can chat about, and uh, I welcome questions, and we can maybe chat afterwards. Thank you. Thank you.